I'm down here in the corner, a little small. Again, my name is Marlena Mack. I am um, here to assist any of our members on the call today with navigating our program throughout. I'll help you get to through the program with ease. So my contact information will be uh, in this presentation that I'm about to give you guys here quickly. Again, we are HGAC by a nationwide cooperative um, operated by the Houston Galveston Area Council of Governments. Um, we'll talk about our great benefits, but here's one that we can point out. Now we are contractor funded, meaning that your membership with us is completely free. Um, just a few stats. We have over 8,000 members and over 8,000 contractors. So a plethora of things for you guys to choose from when it comes to procurement. We also have over 40 major product categories. And in 2020, uh, we had over one, about 1 1.6 billion in total products purchased. So we are moving along and doing well um, as we have been in existence uh, for quite some time. Our members, so if you are any of these items, these entities listed to this side of the screen. Um, if you are a, anything from a nonprofit to a government entity, um, you can be a member if you are not already a member. Someone should be dropping a link in the chat for you to see how to sign up and complete our online um, ILC and become a member with HGAC by. Also, if you are already a member with either SACOG, MARC, BRCPC, or MASC, you are already a member with HGAC by. You do not have to go through the process of completing the ILC. You automatically become a member if you are in any of those regions. Additionally, we will soon be having several um, outreach initiatives with our partners, so look out for those here soon. Moving right along to some, again, like I said, some of our benefits. Um, as a member of HGAC Buy, you can take advantage of better pricing, cost savings, soft cost savings, sorry. And of course, because we go through the procurement process for you, the bid process for you, then we save you tons and tons of time. Um, with going through that. And of course, time is money. So again, we're saving you money. We do satisfy the statute requirements for competitive bids. If you go to our website, you'll see each statute for each state. Um, so wherever you are across the US, you will see that we do satisfy those bid requirements and also on our website, we keep all of the solicitation documents that you need in case an audit comes up or in case your procurement team just needs them to verify that we indeed do satisfy the statute requirements for competitive bids. Quickly um, and lastly, we do offer financial assistance, assistance, I'm sorry, through our local development cooperation. Um, for both vendors and members, you'll see here, um, we have the 504 program for vendors and a business loan fund for members. Again, someone should be dropping in the chat now how to contact um, LDC for more information on if you guys need any funding. Also, I'll bring up here that um, and again, someone should be dropping in the chat information that we provide about federal funding. So if you guys get grants or any type of federal funding, we offer a little pamphlet, a little assistance for you all to go through the program that should help you understand that typically you guys can purchase through us, um, even with those grants and federal funding. If you all would like to take a screenshot or jot down contact information, here's some important context that you all may need. Our procurement lead who will be over our procurement team, as mentioned earlier, is LaWanda James. So when 
you all get to the point of processing orders and you've gotten everything placed or you get lost somewhere and don't know who to turn something in, you can contact LaWanda James and she'll get you to the correct procurement coordinator for your contract, whether it's this one or any of the others. Again, I am Marlena Mack and here is my contact information. You can jot that down or take a, a screenshot. On the previous screen, I um, told you about our LDC program and the loan funding. So this is for members or vendors on the call. You can jot down Isaac's um, contact information if you would like to reach out. And if you are not a member, um, you can reach out to Stephanie on becoming a member if you get lost in completing your ILC. If you're just unsure, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll look up your ILC for you or tell you if you are or you're not. For today, here is our schedule. So we will go through, I'm, I'm finished with our PowerPoint and now we will start um, going our pre I'm sorry, our vendors will start presenting here in this room. And at the end of their presentations, if you guys have any questions or any comments or wanna continue the conversation with them, um, please jot them down because they will open up breakout rooms. You'll be able to go in their breakout rooms and continue the conversation in their breakout rooms. So do we have any questions about that? And if not, I'll turn it back over to Nicolette or Joshua so that our vendors on the call can get going. That was wonderful, Marlena. Thank you, Joshua. Good time. <laughs> All right, everybody. Our first vendors today will be Waukesha Pierce Industries. We have Thomas Lawrence and Ms. Sheila Adams. Thomas, I do believe that you are presenting, correct, sir? Yes, sir. All righty. Whenever you're ready, take it away. Okay. And please feel free to take notes during the presentations. Hi guys, uh, my name is Tom and uh, with me is Sheila. Uh, we represent Waukesha Pierce Industries and um, what we're trying to show off today is how we work with HGAC in our the contract that we have with them uh, right now, it's the GE 02-20 contract. Uh, it focuses on um, backup generators and uh, standby power systems. So um, not sure if you guys are familiar with us. So I just want to give a very brief history. Um, we're almost 100 years old as a company. We're family owned. Uh, we focus in Texas, but we have 47 locations across the U.S. And um, we have access on our HGAC contract to uh, Generac as our manufacturer. Uh, we also have access to other generators, other generator, generator manufacturers as well. But on our HGAC contract, we focus on Generac. Um, there's our contact information should you need it or we can give it to you later. So uh, what exactly is on this contract? How can it help you? Um, here's a little picture that does a pretty good job of showing um, exactly what is provided or what you can get through um, HGAC by. And uh, we have our mobile generators as well as our light towers, our mobile light towers. Um, probably the biggest thing that gets utilized in this contract are our standby generators. Uh, we have access to our entire lineup pretty much, uh, or Generac's entire lineup. And also we have, um, we can also provide residential and light commercial generators and gen sets um, for you guys if you would so desire. So this is what we cover. Basically we run the whole gamut of, of sizing for generators. Um, it's single node applications. We do diesel generators from 10 kilowatt to uh, 2000 kilowatt or two meg. Natural gas, 35 uh, through 1,000. Um, we also have two biofuel applications and where this kind of seems to fit in uh, sometimes in, in um, emergency applications for hospitals where you want a decent amount of runtime, um, but you don't want to necessarily have all the diesel on site. We have two biofuel, a 500 node and a 600 node that can help 
kind of meet this need and this uh, this niche. And then also on the contract, we have um, ATSs to support this or automatic transfer switches, uh, which will switch between um, your source or your power that's coming in. Then when you lose power, switch to generator power. So that's kind of something that's necessary for these applications. Um, and we have those as well. Also, um, we're, we're a leader in uh, NPS or parallel systems. This allows you to combine a bunch of smaller units to uh, offer a, a range of, um, of very good features for you. And it's also significantly cheaper. And it's how we also approach the larger than uh, 2000 kilowatt or two meg applications. So here's uh, one thing that is very important for those of you who are looking to get a generator or looking uh, or, or your job is procurement. Um, you have to consider the service side of things. Um, these generators sometimes by law are mandated to be serviced in a certain way. Um, we can do that for you. Um, it is on our contract. We can, we can put together things for you that will give you the ability to have this generator taken care of after you get it. Um, some of the things we do are preventative maintenance, fuel polishing, load banking, and you can rest assured that we have certified Generac technicians that can handle this for you if you so desire. Also, in addition to that, we also have an, uh, installation groups that handle the installation of these generators and transfer switches. So what it really turns into is we can do a turnkey application for you. We can provide you the equipment we can install it for you and we can service it through the life of the generator and we can do this all through HGAC. And what this kind of leads to is I've noticed that it's really helpful with procurement, especially nowadays with where there's so many supply shortages going on right now. Lead times for machinery, especially heavy machinery, they are absolutely, ask anybody, they are through the roof. Uh, I will say that Generac has done very well in, in this regard, and I would probably very close to market leaders as far as lead time goes. Um, so that's a plus, uh, but this, this procurement, it's so much easier than spending a significant amount of time and money going through all sorts of engineering, bidding once, bidding twice, rebidding, you know, it's just, it, I can only imagine that it's a massive headache. Um, so this is probably the biggest advantage that I see with this contract and how we can work together with HGAC and you as a procurer or end user to have kind of a symbiotic relationship that, that really works out well for all parties and saves you money and saves you a big headache. So um, I just wanted to mention a few things uh, where we tend to specialize and uh, you can see them listed there. I don't need to read them all, all off for you. Those are some of the more popular um, applications that we, that we find. And just wanted to mention again that parallel solutions or NPS as we call it, and natural gas, that is what we do. Uh, we are some of the best at it. So what I want to be for you um, is really an, an advocate, uh, a power advocate to help you out. Not only can we help you out going through this contract and get you the generator you want, we can help you out on the front end um, with your, your engineers or just you yourself, if you're not sure, to help you out with sizing. We have a very good sizing program, free to use. Um, you could use it for your, I mean, our competitors could use it if they want. They probably have something similar, but um, that's what we use a lot of times in addition to our experience that we already have to get an idea of what size generator you need so you're not over or undersized. Also, um, I would say our, our customers generally are electrical contractors um, as well as end users. So we know this market very well. Uh, we are in very well with our professional engineers and we have some knowledge of the code regulations, all stuff that, that you might not know that we can help you out with and at least put you in the right direction. And also we're looking, always looking for ways to, to be creative. And uh, one particular thing that we are working on right now is called demand response, at least for Texas. There are other versions of it in different states. It's where you get paid money to take your generators off the grid, so to speak, or to shed load. And what I found happens here is that a lot of people, uh, let's take an application, for example, nursing homes. 
they might not have the money to front a large capital expense like a standby power system, but it's something that they really need. Well, what we can do is if it's a natural gas, we can go ahead and put you in a demand response program. We'll pay off your generator in a couple of years. And then you go from having something that costs you a considerable amount of money that you see as a sunk cost turning into a revenue generator for you. So this is something that is a really great thing that we can do for you. We would love to talk to you about it. And we can do all of this stuff uh, via the HGAC contract. So that's all I have. I want to kind of keep it kind of short. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, or Sheila. And uh, it was thanks for your attention and your time. Appreciate it. All right, Thomas, that was great. Let's give him a round of applause, y'all. Not a whole lot of cameras on, but I assume that you guys are all clapping. <clears throat> I'll take that as a yes. I appreciate it either way, guys. Okay, um, real quick, Thomas, uh, I noticed that you and Sheila did not have your contact information on your slide. So if you would not mind dropping that in the chat box below, that'd be great. Sure, sure, we will do. All right. Next up, we have Mike Kenoy with Aeroclave. Mike, are you ready? Good, sir. I, I see am you. here. Yes. All right. How are you guys? Let me go ahead and start sharing my screen here. Everybody see that okay? Yes, sir. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me and see me okay. I really appreciate the opportunity to come out here and speak to you this morning. Um, uh, for those of you who have never heard of Aeroclave or are unaware of what we do, uh, Aeroclave, uh, we've actually been around for about 18 years now. Um, so we were not created because of the pandemic. We uh, survived until the pandemic happened. So um, we are the world's uh, foremost manufacturer of large scale decontamination equipment. And we do a number of things, um, but really what's most important for uh, the folks here on this call and other mun municipalities is we manufacture a line of portable disinfection machines. Um, why that's important right now, as you guys probably already know, that we're all in a pandemic. Um, but one thing that I always like to stress when I'm discussing this is that these are not just pandemic type things. Cold and flu season rolls around every year. We all deal with sicknesses almost on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So while the focus and the urgency right now is for COVID-19, keep in mind that that's just a virus, just like any other virus, just under any other bacteria that's out there that's affecting our day-to-day -day operations. So um, as you can see there, there's just a few of our bona fides. Uh, we're currently being deployed by over 850 public safety agencies in North America. Um, we've also been adapted by several states for their infectious disease control plans, uh, Colorado, Florida, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Vermont, Tennessee, um, and we've added a few others at this point. So really what is the Aeroclay process and how does it work? So our Aeroclay systems work in one of two ways. The main way that they can be operated is in a fog mode. Um, so take this device right here. This is uh, by far and away our most popular product, uh, the RDS 3110. RDS stands for Room Decontamination System. Uh, three means it has three fogging heads and 110 means it runs off 110 volt power. Uh, but the way that our process works is twofold. So the main way to operate them is in a fogging mode. So you basically take any one of our devices, place it in an enclosed area. Now this could be the inside of a vehicle, inside of a room, inside of a gymnasium, uh, basically any size room, you could take this device, place it inside, tell it how long you want it to run based on the size of that space, hit the start button and walk away. What's gonna happen is a three-part process. First, the unit's gonna fog the disinfectant. Uh, the disinfectant that we use is a commercially available hospital grade disinfectant that's fully EPA approved and tested. It's non-toxic and it's non-corrosive, so it can easily fit into your day-to-day -day operations, isn't going to put anyone at risk, and it's going to do the job of killing the bacteria and viruses that you're going after. So the device is going to fog for a period of time. Uh, after that, you allow that fog to remain in that space to make contact with the surfaces for what we recommend is a period of 10 minutes. Um, and actually, the EPA has now come out and said that for COVID-19 specifically, you, you only need to do this for five minutes. But basically, allow that fog to make contact with all the surfaces. After that holding period, you let it air out, which can take anywhere from five to 10 minutes. And then after that, you're left with a room where every exposed surface is free of bacteria and viruses. And what you're going to find when you walk back into that room is that that area is going to look and feel like it did when you first started. 
There's not gonna be any residue. There's not gonna be any moisture. Um, in fact, you can leave all of your papers, your sensitive electronics in there, and it's gonna be able to decontaminate all those at the exact same time. Uh, really the only physical difference that most of our customers experience when they walk back into a space that's just been decontaminated is the absence of odors, because not only are we killing the bacteria and the viruses that are making us sick, but we're also killing a lot of the odor causing bacteria that are on our hands and feet and on our clothes that we're bringing in um, from the outside. So um, it's a very odd sensation when you walk in and say, I never realized how bad my office smelled before. Uh, so uh, you can always you can always pick and choose who, who the people are with the smelly offices and things like that. So um, so this device right here is about the size of a, a, a roll on suitcase, uh, weighs about 45 pounds. Um, easy to transport. Uh, for, for fire, EMS, and police, this is by far and away our most popular model for a number of reasons. Uh, one, you can see it's mounted into a Pelican brand case, so it's ruggedized. It can be used indoors and outdoors. Um, it's also lightweight and portable, so it's not necessarily something that needs to be uh, stationed at a certain facility and can only be used there. Um, we have a lot of large cities and large counties that uh, ideally they'd like to get one of these at each one of their facilities, but they can easily move them around throughout the county. Um, and then in times of uh, a surge, like we're seeing now during the pandemic, um, and I know you guys down in Houston deal with hurricanes just like we do in Florida, we have a lot of customers that uh, after the fact, when they're going through different facilities, uh, when they have shelters set up for people who are displaced, when you get a lot of people who just were coming from a lot of different walks of life, chances are at least one of them is going to be sick. And uh, to be able to help minimize a lot of the spread of those potential illnesses in those areas uh, really helps make uh, that job of recovering those areas a, a lot easier. Uh, the next device I want to show you here is a uh, very similar in nature to the one that we just saw previously, uh, but this one can do much larger spaces. Uh, so this is one that's probably more attuned to being inside of a hospital or healthcare facility. Uh, a city or municipality administration building, a large police department. Again, works on the same fogging principle. Um, and I should have mentioned, I think I skipped over this initially, not only can you fog, but you can also hand apply our process as well. So as you can see behind this device, there's two little hand sprayers on tripods that in that fashion are being used as a fogger, but you can simply take those, pop them off the tripod and spray down the surfaces that you want which is ideal for areas where you may wanna have a quick turnaround time. Exteriors, remember, our same dirty hands are grabbing the handles on the outside of those doors, just as they are on the inside of those doors. So there's a lot of areas where people are congregating, exteriors of buildings, exteriors of vehicles, where we're still transmitting a lot of those bacteria and viruses back and forth to each other. So that's one of the things that uh, makes the aeroclay process stand out is that you have both the fogging and the hand spray uh, application. There's a lot of foggers out there. There's a lot of hand sprayers. There's not very many that actually combine the two. Um, and so this system here uh, has a much higher capacity, but it can do larger spaces. It also has uh, a little bit more intelligence. So you can actually uh, input uh, uh, facility specs into this. So every time you go into a room, you don't necessarily have to figure out how big it is. You can say, I'm in conference room A, I'm in training room B, I'm in the kitchen, um, and it's going to remember all that. That actual intelligent technology is going to soon be applied across our entire product line. So even our smaller portable systems will have that as well. And then the last device I want to show you here is uh, one that uh, really sets us apart. Uh, we actually have the patent for this. And uh, while it's called an ambulance decontamination system, that's actually a little bit of a misnomer. Um, this is really a device that can be installed on any vehicle that has an interior space. Um, and this device rides along with the vehicle. Um, so you actually can be driving down the road and hit the button and do the process in the back. Uh, the real goal for this device here was uh, for agencies, uh, in particular fire EMS, who they want to decontaminate after every patient. Um, and they don't want to have to rely to either going back to a station or going back to a hospital that may have portable equipment for them to do that. And this allows them to do that uh, on board, runs off vehicle power. Um, it's got a half gallon tank. Uh, it's a, in an average size vehicle, like an ambulance or a large trans uh, uh, personnel transport vehicle. It's a 20 minute process start to finish. Um, if you've ever looked inside of an ambulance and seen how many surfaces there are and cracks and crevices, uh, I can tell you that it takes a lot longer than 20 minutes to, uh, to effectively disinfect a lot of those same spaces. And then lastly here, I uh, just wanna just kind of show you some of the users that we have. Uh, so like I said, we've been around for about 18 years now. Uh, so we're, we're, not a, we're not new to this game. This is something that we've been working on for a long time, uh, developing these uh, types of devices. Uh, namely uh, important for the pandemic as we're seeing now, uh, but certainly not only for the pandemic. So just keep that in mind that uh, hopefully we are uh, coming out of this pandemic soon. 
Um, but once we do, uh, remember that bacteria and virus are consistently affecting our operations on a day-to-day, -day, a week-to-week, a month-to-month -month basis. Um, so proactive disinfection of those areas and frankly, just providing healthier environments for your staff um, and potentially your stakeholders and customers to be in. Uh, we're all seeing the signs already that people are going to be asking for this moving on. What are you doing to ensure that I'm in a healthy environment, a safe environment? Um, you can't bury your head, your head in the sand anymore and just say, well, we don't know that there's technology out there or we're just going to use a mop and bucket. Uh, this is going to soon be demanded and, and possibly even a requirement in certain, in certain instances. So uh, with that, uh, I actually opened up the wrong presentation. So this one doesn't have my uh, contact information on there. Let me, if you bear with me for two seconds, I'm going to pull the one out so you can see it. I'm sorry. Uh, you can also just, you can put it in the chat box if you want, Mike. Yep. Oh, um, sorry. Here, right here, just in case. So okay. here, here's the information. I opened the wrong presentation. Uh, again, I really appreciate the time and the opportunity today. Um, and, and thank you specifically to the HGAC folks. You guys have been phenomenal for us. Uh, in getting uh, our name out there and really helping us uh, grow um, and whatever we can to, to, to help you guys. Even if Aeroclave isn't the answer, we want to make sure that people are healthy. Uh, we can always direct you to uh, the appropriate parties to help you with that. Um, and uh, if you wait until next week to come to our website, you'll see our brand, uh, brand new uh, shiny website. So uh, guys, uh, I really uh, appreciate the opportunity again and everyone have a good rest of the day. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Mike. The germaphobe in me is so happy. <laughs> uh, Mike, I had a quick question about your application. So yeah. Could you use this inside of a sterile compounding facility? So uh, most likely not with the disinfectant that we're currently using. Um, mm. There are certain liquids that you can use that are going to meet those standards. Uh, so typically those are going to uh, be regulated under the FDA. Um, so the disinfectant that we use is... Um, uh, it, it's a mild disinfectant, which is good to just use for day-to-day -day operations. But if you're looking for something that has a specific purpose, like you're hinting at, there certainly are other liquids that you can use in our systems that would be able to meet those standards. All right. I believe Mr. Ronnie Barnes has a question. Sure. Hi, Mike. Thanks. Thanks for a great presentation. Um, uh, the ambulance uh, unit is is. Does that application get added to perhaps maybe a school bus? It, 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 I'm glad that you asked that. So uh, in the last year, we've actually made a lot of headway in public transportation. And we are seeing a number of public transit buses and school buses that are implementing that technology as well. Uh, we have a lot in Texas, Oklahoma, and California that are doing that currently. Okay. Is that, is that, is that, that's mostly aftermarket? Are you working with any of the bus manufacturers to to install it in their build? So uh, primarily we're working with a group, a distributor out of California called Creative Bus Sales. Uh, they're, a they're a nationwide uh, bus distributor um, and they work, uh, th they're the conduit for us to the manufacturers. So they do a lot of aftermarket work and what they're promoting now to a lot of people is as you begin to spec out your new buses, go ahead and start to build this in there. Um, one of the uh, uh, key components that we always wanted to maintain of any of our, our vehicle systems is that they can be done as a retrofit. So this is not something that has to be done at the factory, but obviously it makes the process that much simpler and easier for you to do it at the factory. Yeah, because you can imagine there are, you know, big fleets already in existence. Exactly. Right? And so so my, my, the question I was trying to get to is that if we, we have some conversation with you, you know, at a later time uh, when we were perhaps talking with school districts or talking with a member that has school districts, you know, we may want to see if we can have a some joint conversation, make a joint presentation as here's a solution um, that, that you may not have considered and you can work that through HJC by. Absolutely. Yeah, you're on the right track. You absolutely can do that. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. All right, folks, any more questions before we move to our next presentation? Great questions, though. Amazing. Yes. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Mike. All right, next up, we have Emergency Technical Decon, and Mr. Paul Slumpberger will be presenting for us. Hey, uh, good morning, and this is also for uh, not only for firefighters, but also germaphobes. So I'm glad to have some, <laughs> some germaphobes in the room. Um, 
I'm going to share my screen, but uh, before I do that, um, you know, I think if, if everybody could leave uh, my, my discussion with, with two things, it would be number one, that um, carcinogens are the number one uh, killer of firefighters in North America. So, so cancer and, and the cancer caused by carcinogens, um, number one. And number two, that uh, water washing is, is not enough to get the carcinogens out of firefighter turnout gear. And a, a basic way to determine if you've gotten all the carcinogens out, if you've ever uh, been next to a firefighter, you have a firefighter in your family, and their turnout gear smells like smoke, you didn't get all the carcinogens out. So those are really the two things. And uh, with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a video here and, and we'll get started. Around the world, emergency medical responders are becoming more aware and proactively addressing issues of occupational health and safety. Emergency Technical Decon has established North America's first liquid CO2 cleaning facility, verified to the NFPA 1851-2020 standard. Our patented liquid CO2 cleaning process significantly increases the life of all PPE maintaining its original qualities while eliminating over 99% of viral and bacterial hazards in one cycle. We believe every first responder has earned the right to full protection from their PPE, not just when it's new, but over the life of the gear. Learn more about Emergency Technical Decon online. All right, so... Um, Around the world, emergency medical responders are becoming more aware and proactive. Okay, we'll try that again. Um, so hopefully that kind of gave everybody an, an introduction into uh, emergency technical de decon and the services uh, that we offer. Um, maybe just a little bit of background, as I stated before, you know, cancer is the number one leading cause of death among firefighters. Um, you know, one of the, the major challenges is how to remove all of the carcinogens from the turnout gear. There's been major studies done over the last few years in regards to this, but also um, there's been a number of new technologies. One of the, the things that you can see here in this picture is a process called flocking. And for those who are not uh, familiar with the fire services, that is a process that's used to uh, decontaminate um, on site the firefighters. The challenge with that is um, those carcinogens during that process end up getting embedded into uh, the firefighter turnout gear. Um, the current, uh, you know, the most current process for removing that from the gear is uh, what you see here in this uh, photo. This is what's called, for those that aren't familiar, uh, this is called an extractor. Um, an extractor is very similar to a washing machine, um, and there are specific uh, types of uh, detergents that are used to help remove, uh, you know, to help remove the carcinogens, but um, the, the efficacy of that is anywhere from 25 to 30 percent. So there there's, tends to be about 70 percent of the carcinogens are still in the firefighter turnout gear. Um, there, once again, as I said, there are a, a variety of different studies that have been done in regards to firefighter exposure. Um, the, the specifically as it relates to how much water wash, um, one of the studies that came out of the Netherlands um, here states roughly 15 to, to 40 percent. Um, but, you know, the, the gist of that 
is that water washing is not enough to clean firefighter gear. Um, we have done a, a number of studies with the NFPA, both with UL and Intertech, and these graphics show, you know, roughly 12 of the different, um, basically what are called PAHs, which is a, a category of carcinogens. And what this graph, this first graph here shows is the concentration of the outer shell, the inner membrane of the gear, and then also the lining. And this shows what it looks like after just one indoor fire. And this graph here represents what that same gear looked like after a water wash with one of the more, more common uh, detergents that's used. And as you can see, water washing does help, um, especially in the outer shell, but it continues to, you know, the, the, the concentration of carcinogens is still um, extremely high in the gear. Uh, down here, this graph shows um, what that same concentration levels look like after the liquid CO2 processing. So as you can see, in many of these cases, those carcinogens are, are, are non-detectable. So a, a certified process demonstrating that those carcinogens have been removed. And once again, it's been verified by UL and Intertech. Um, this, uh, I'm not going to get into a, a lot of the science here, um, but uh, this here talks about the reasons why and the solubility uh, and the decontaminating um, benefits of using CO2. Um, this next slide here just talks about um, the fact that we are the first uh, CO2 decontamination facility uh, in North America. We're currently, our current facility is in Egan, Minnesota, where we're uh, shipping gear in from different states. Uh, we have another facility uh, being stood up in Wilsonville, Oregon, where we'll also be offering the same service. Um, this here just talks a little bit about what the NFPA, and for those not familiar, NFPA is the governing body for uh, firefighters, but this here really just shows what is required in regards to removal. So for SVOCs, which is one category of carcinogen, 50% uh, is required. Our process is removing 99.6% um, metals, 50% required. Currently, we're, we're in the 70 to 80% range of removal. And bacterial kill two, um, we, kill, we kill them all. So um, that uh, the, the, the other uh, significant difference in CO2 gear is also the durability. Um, you know, because of the, the fact that we're using CO2 and not water, and we're not having to heat up the gear during the cleaning or decontamination process, um, the durability after multiple cycles is significantly better. So from a, a cost savings perspective, um, typically firefighter gear can last anywhere from five to seven years. And because of the fact that, that during our process, uh, we're not degradating the material. We're seeing significant improvements in the overall uh, life of, of that gear. So um, in, in many cases, simply using this process um, pays for itself in regards to how long the gear lasts uh, as opposed to using water. Um, I'm going to kind of wrap up pretty quickly here. This just talks about some of the different uh, PFOSs, which are also carcinogens um, that uh, we also remove that aren't removed by water. Uh, this talks just a little bit about the process, and I won't get into detail. Um, in the video, you guys saw some of the 
uh, photos of our clean room facility in Egan, Minnesota. And I think one of the, the last things that I just wanted to share with you is this study uh, that was done in Belgium uh, with one of our uh, previous business partners. But uh, what this graph demonstrates is if you, um, basically the situation was blood, blood was drawn from three firefighters um, after, after wearing their, their turnout gear. And there were three types. So this blue line here represents the concentration of toxic uh, compounds found in the firefighter's body um, after 30 minutes of exercising with turnout gear. So this blue line represents the turnout gear not being clean. And you can see the high level of concentration of toxins. This gray line here represents the amount of carcinogens in their body with uh, the turnout gear being washed with water. And this bottom line here shows um, that same, a, a, a different firefighter, but what his concentration was after having um, the gear uh, cleaned with the CO2 process. So a very clear um, study of how these toxins are getting into the bloodstream of, of firefighters. So um, I'm going to end there uh, and ask if there are any uh, questions. Okay, it looks like not right now, but I'm sure everybody is saving their questions for the breakout rooms, which will be opening at the end. Uh, but thank you so much, Paul. Give him a little round of applause. Yes, because that's important. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Thank you. All right, Paul, that was great. Some wonderful, wonderful information. We never really think about what our firefighters are being exposed to when they run into these buildings. Uh, glad you shed some light on that. All right, next up we have Cummins and we have William Cole Tucker presenting. All right, can everybody hear me okay? Yes, sir. Uh, awesome, thank you for, for having me. Uh, my name is Cole Tucker, first name is William. I go by Cole, it's a pain in the butt. Uh, I definitely won't do it to my children whenever I have them, but anyhow, I go by my middle name. So um, as, as Joshua stated, I'm with Cummins. Um, I'm a commercial industrial sales rep here in the Houston, partially in the Houston area, also handle a bit of Louisiana as well. Um, and I, I, I have my presentations relatively short, we'll open it up for the breakout rooms and uh, everything following this, if any questions do come up. So I will try and uh, share my screen with you. Let me see here. Can everyone see the, my screen? Okay. So I'm gonna try this here. Let's see. All right, so um, first off, thank you again for having me. Um, I'll, just a quick agenda. Uh, I'm just going to give you a short video, try and get the video to work, give you a history, a little bit about Cummins, uh, if you haven't heard of it previously. I've got some pictures just of some things along the timeline um, of our history, a brief product overview. There's a lot of different things to cover. I could spend 30 minutes or an hour or more talking about what we do have to offer, so I'm going to try and go through that as quickly as I can. Um, and then, of course, my contact information and actually Harsha, who was not able to join today, uh, is the, the contact officially for HGAC and the BUY program. Um, like I said, given that it's in Houston, there are several sales reps who you would deal with directly, including myself. Harsha uh, deals with everything from a contractual standpoint with HGAC, but we are the local representatives when it comes to end users. Uh, municipalities, et cetera, that, that need the assistance in quoting. So uh, let me try and go to this video here. Let's see. One second. All right. Thank you. 
We live in a world where everything is there for you. A world that never stops. We live in a world that is always on. Your job site is always on. Your hospital is always on. Your data center is always on. Your business always on. Cummins is powering a world that's always on. Your home is always on. Your RV, always on. Your stadium, always on. Your mine sites, always on. From waterways to railways, oil and gas operations to military services. Every second of every day, people in 190 countries rely on Cummins power systems because no one has more experience turning energy into power. Big ideas into real solutions. And real solutions into valuable partnerships. In a world that never stops, Cummins Power Systems make sure you are always on. Cummins, powering a world that's always on. So anyway, that was just a brief, can you hear me okay, Josh? Okay. That was just a brief. Yes, sir. Cummins Power Systems, Power Systems Business Unit is a business unit within Cummins. As many of you may know, we also, of course, build engines, which are a part of a generator set. And so that video encompasses a little bit of everything. We do marine applications, oil and gas applications, uh, et cetera. What we're talking about today specifically is the power generation business, which Started in 1920. This is just a little bit of a timeline. I'm not going to go through everything on here. Um, we, you know, in the mid 1920s, we provided all lighthouses with power uh, with our first generators. So Onan Corporation, which some of you may be familiar with, some may not. That's where the power gen side of our business started. Uh, DW Onan started that piece of it, and in 1992. We acquired Cummins, acquired Onan, which Onan had previously acquired Stanford Newage Alternator Ends, which you may be may or may not be familiar with. So Cummins owns and builds everything from the generator set, the alternator in skid base. We have factory packages as well um, from front to back. So that's a little bit unique piece of, of what we do uh, that differentiates us is from, from the from the front to the back end of a generator set, we, we have those pieces. And last year, I know it's 2021 now, and people don't really want to talk about 2020, but 2021 seems to be going uh, equally as interesting. Uh, last year was our 100 year anniversary. So um, just a, a little piece of history there for us. And these are some of the milestones. Uh, as I had stated earlier, World War II, we were a big factor in that piece of it with our generators. And 1992 was the big acquisition. Everybody, a lot of people in the power gen industry are familiar with the Onan name, which on our smaller commercial mobile RV sets, we kept that name because of the brand recognition, although Cummins owns it. Um, for the larger sets, the commercial industrial you know, piece of it that I'm a part of, we use Cummins power generation, but it's still all the original Onan products. So and in 2015, this is a little picture here. This doesn't really do justice, but we launched a 95 liter generator set. So that's a extremely large engine for those of you that don't know the radiator, some 14 odd feet tall. Um, this is up to 3,750 kVA, 3.5 megawatts uh, of power that we launched in 2015. So um, I'll go through this. This is a busy slide. I do apologize. You don't have to read every piece of it. Um, it's just a brief overview of what we have to offer. As I mentioned, diesel generator sets, natural gas, uh, also propane, mobile generator sets, transfer switches, and paralleling switch gear and controls. So uh, we offer up to 3,500 kW on the diesel side, two megawatts currently on the natural gas side, which includes lean burn technology. Uh, the mobile generator sets, we have up to 275, 7275, there are tier four final certified. Uh, I don't want to go, I, I, for 
forbearance of what may or may not know or understand that might be Greek language to you, but um, as far as the EPA is concerned, that's what we have to meet for mobile sets. The transfer switches, we have anything from 40 to 3,000 amps. Again, that's a Cummins solution that's built um, at Cummins Power Systems Manufacturing Facility in Fridley. The paralleling switch gear, uh, for those that don't know what that means, that would essentially tying several generator sets to, together to get more power than just one. So adding them all together, we offer those solutions anywhere from simply paralleled solutions to complex uh, multi-bus topologies. You know, for instance, a hospital with maybe two utility services coming in, uh, main time mains, medium voltage up to 13.8 kV. We offer those solutions as well. Um, these are some of the codes down here towards the bottom. These are not everything that we meet or that we're certified to. These are just some of the big things that people in the industry may or may not be familiar with, um, as well as the application. So standby, this was mentioned earlier, uh, standby prime continuous and demand. There are demand response capabilities out there for that. So uh, that was mentioned earlier. As far as peak shaving goes, utility rate curtailment, where you know you're essentially putting power back on the grid, um, whether that's for profit or just for less cost on your end. Um, however, you know this the situation is set up with the local utility. Um, really, if there's any, I don't want to go into this too terribly much. A lot of it's pretty specific. If there are more specific questions, I'd be more than happy to to answer them. Uh, during the breakout sessions. It's really just to give you an idea of what we have to offer and to, to give an array that we build everything in-house as far as the emergency power system is concerned. So the generator sets, transfer switches, paralleling gear, we have remote monitoring via the cloud, uh, you know, internet capability, remote monitoring, where you can download an app on your phone to view alarms, control your equipment, uh, things of that sort um, that, that makes us unique uh, in, in a sense because there's a lot of folks that build generator sets that don't necessarily build uh, the other pieces and components that we can design. We have engineering teams in-house. Cummins is roughly 60,000 employees uh, across the globe. So uh, large, complex uh, organization, and we can help with that. Um, my contact information is here. Um, if uh, uh, rather than share it in the chat, this is Harsha, which uh, some of you may be familiar with on the HGAC team. If you've dealt with him, I'm not quite certain. I can be a local contact here in the Houston area or wherever. Feel free to reach out to me if I can't help you with it. I will gladly help with someone who can. Um, this is a snapshot just of really support in, in my mind. So we have 8,000 different dealer locations all across the globe. Cummins owns all of its distributorships now in North America, or it's some joint venture of sorts. In Texas, it's Cummins Southern Plains, which that's because of certain laws in Texas that have to do with manufacturers, distributors. But Cummins, for all intents and purposes, owns its distributors in North America. So we're all part of one team. We're not private distributorships any longer. We all work directly hand in hand with the manufacturer, if you will, from a sales and service organization. Um, so if anybody has any questions, again, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them. Towards the end, I apologize for the issues with the video. Um, I, I had to, uh, to put this together. Harsha was, something came up where Harsha came out, and so I had to put it together pretty quickly as I talked to Nicolette about yesterday. So I do apologize uh, for that, but I'd be more than happy to help answer any questions uh, if, any, if I can help with anything. No, good job, Cole. Um, I, think, I think everyone is good, yay. Um, if anybody has any questions though for Cole, afterwards the breakout rooms will also be open, so it's all right, don't be shy. Um, <laughs> But we're gonna move on to our last presenter, Mr. Todd Moore. Oh, look, he's already ready. Todd he is Moore. ready. I'm ready. <laughs> and Todd is with Municipal Emergency Services, if you guys were wondering. Thank you, Joshua. Well, sure, before I start my slides, um, 
thank everyone from HJC by to uh, invite me to this forum. I really appreciate it. Really do. And um, we've been, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen. Can everybody see my screen now? Yes, sir. Wonderful. Okay, just real quick about municipal emergency services. Um, we were established back in 2001. And so we, we actually um, serve the emergency responder market, which includes fire, um, law enforcement, and EMS. And so it's, it's in our name, um, municipal emergency services. So we, we serve those who serve the public and emergency responders. So our customers can be very demanding. Um, they're very, very dangerous jobs is what these, what these folks do. And based on our footprint, because it says in our slide here, and we have over 200 sales representatives, outside sales representatives across the United States. And um, we've been working with, uh, with HJC for quite a few years now on a, on a separate contract. And um, one nice thing about working with HJC is anybody on this call understands our customers sometimes have to get multiple bids, RFPs, and that can be a very expensive process, right? But if we can, if our salespeople can offer an existing contract that was competitively bid, like the HJC buy contract, that allows fire departments, law enforcement agencies to purchase off of a, an existing contract. And it really helps the purchasing departments within those um, streamline their process and get orders and get product to uh, in-house a whole lot quicker. Um, one way we do that is um, we've got street three strategically located stocking hubs throughout the United States, one in New Jersey, um, one in uh, North Carolina and Charlotte, and we have one in Denver. And then we have 21 physical locations throughout the United States, and we have small stocking hubs in those. Um, one of those being right here in Houston. We're off Airtex Drive up in uh, North Houston. Um, we have 100 plus uh, mobile service technicians and 100 plus uh, additional support staff. So we, we have a footprint that helps us promote the HGC by contract and it really helps our customers in the long run. Um, we're incorporated out of uh, Sandy Hook, Connecticut. Um, I've got a video. Um, we, we represent multiple manufacturers, 200 plus overall. Um, on this particular emergency preparedness and safety equipment contract, we represent about roughly 30 um, different manufacturers. And I don't have time to go through all of those. And I know you guys are thankful for that. Um, but um, um, I do now wanna to touch on five of the manufacturers or four or five of the manufacturers that we represent that are particularly pertinent to this particular contract. And so I've got a quick video for one of those products. It's called the Seek Thermal Scan. And with all the COVID going on, it's uh, for, for, for businesses to be able to control entry to, to determine is somebody, you know, is somebody running a favor or are they not? It's just a quick screening process that allows them to say, okay, we don't, we, we, you know, we, we welcome this person in because they're, they're probably not sick or this person needs further evaluation to determine whether or not we wanna let them in our building because they obviously don't wanna contaminate other people. So let me show you this quick video and it runs about a minute and then I will go on from there. It's thinking. Okay, it looks like, oh, here we go. Your organization faces complex challenges. Temperature screening shouldn't be one of them. Introducing C-Scan Kiosk, the simple and affordable solution that streamlines temperature checks with no touch, no fuss thermal scanning. This all-in-one solution comes with a C-Scan camera and reference heat source, a 10-inch Windows tablet, durable aluminum stands, and all required cables. The system is universally applicable in manufacturing, government, healthcare, education, hospitality, and general business facilities. Simplify temperature screening with SeekScan Kiosk. Okay, back to the PowerPoint. So you can see just from the quick video um, that it's, it, it's a pretty simple system to open up. As you, as you have folks that come into your building, you have the seat thermal scan system set up at the entranceway and it gives somebody a quick pass fail. If that person has a fever, 
above a certain uh, above a certain uh, threshold that, 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 that the organization has decided. Um, it'll say, okay, they pass. If they fail it, then they pull them aside for uh, for further evaluation. Um, so one of the other um, products that we that, that we represent is something called point blank body armor, and um, in this, in, 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 because of all the unrest we've seen over the last year, um, this having point blank body armor on the contract really allows law enforcement agencies and believe it or not, fire departments to get access to body armor pretty quickly. And for those of you who don't know what body armor is, body armor is simply, it, it's bulletproof vests, right? It's the helmets, it's the, it's the jackets, it's the carriers that they wear, either soft body armor close to the body or something they can slip over their turnout gear or over their uniform, and, and in case they, they they pull up on some sort of an active shooter type situation, so Point Blank is a, is a manufacturer of body armor. Um, they actually are the largest manufacturer of body armor in the United States, and um, we're lucky enough to represent those guys. Another product that we represent is our, our PAPRs, and that stands for Powered Air Purifying Respirators, and we represent a couple of manufacturers that manufacture those. So those are really um, for folks that. Uh, it could be worked in hospitals and clinics, even um, folks that just don't want to breathe um, what might be in the atmosphere. So it's, it's quick, it's battery operated, has a, a very powerful HIPAA filter and, and other types of filters that you can put on the, on, on the PAPRs that allow you to protect yourself from whatever, whatever you might be breathing. They don't supply oxygen. We have other products that do that, but it actually filters the existing air to keep the particulates out and, and, and the viruses out. Um, another um, company that we represent um, is, is through Millican and Firedex, and they have something called non-surgical isolation gowns and coveralls. So the, what that allows us to do is, is focus on, on ambulances, EMS personnel, firefighters, if they want to don something really quickly just to keep the contaminants off of them. Um, not in a firefighting situation, of course, but just to get you know, after de uh, decon, um, it allows them to keep the bad stuff off. Um, and some of these gowns are disposable. Other ones can be, uh, can be washed and, and reworn, you know, 60, 70, 80 times. It all depends on what the department's budget is and what their need for the isolation gown might be, okay? Um, that's just a, a real rough um, kind of a rundown on some of the manufacturers that we represent. Like I said, we, we represent 200 plus manufacturers overall. We have 30 or so on this contract and they all deal with decon. They deal with it, it's, it's hand sanitizer. Um, it might be some sort of biohazard bags. We have those as well. Um, we have different types of vests. We have different types of boots, anything to pr protect the, the end user from some sort of decam uh, de uh, contaminant they're trying to protect themselves against. And um, so that's what we do. And as a, as a distributor, we represent quite a few different folks so it, it's, it's on the contract and we can talk about any specific other manufacturers we might represent. But I thought that was just a good rundown of, of some of the main ones that we represent for this particular contract. And that's all I've got for today. Awesome, Todd, yes, good Those job. very diverse products. And our contact information is, is, is there on the slide, so.